Hey everyone, just chilling outside today, enjoying the beautiful weather. Getting the e-bikes all ready and set for springtime so we can do some riding. Thought I'd come down here and show you a little art underneath the bridge. And then after that, I'm gonna show you how I assemble my battery packs. I'm, I'm gonna be working on the Z1 battery pack. I just wanted to show you how I test my cells. This is a Zamflare Z1 charger. So right now it's on how many milliamps each one is put out. See this one's 2800 even. There's the resistance, milliohms resistance, and there's the time. From when I started the test, it's been five hours and 44 minutes. And it's charging at 500 milliamps. So that's basically what it does for the test. This one won't test any higher or lower than 500 milliamps. That's what it does. So yeah, this one's at 3.37 volts. It's actually starting to charge and back up. The test is done. And this is what I ended up for milliamp hours in each one. I've noticed that this one reads them a little bit high. These are 2600 milliamp cells. So to see them go up to 2700 wouldn't be that uncommon, but to see them up to 2900 is uncommon. So I think this charger takes it down to a voltage a little lower than it should for testing purposes. But it doesn't matter for me because I'm just trying to keep the cells even between each other. So what I do now when they're done is I just write down how many milliamp hours on the cells with a sharpie. It's 2881. This one's 20. Eight, six, zero. First, I usually try and get as many cells as I can charged up to full charge. I'll get them to 4.10 and then set them aside. I also use this tray to get all the cells that are done to a storage voltage, which for this is about 3.74, 3.73. So it's just kind of a cycle trying to balance between each other. Normally I can get f three sets of four done a day on this charger. Okay, now I think I'm gonna show you that cell builder and start punching some of these in, start selecting my cells. Okay, these are the available cells that I have. The original battery had 40 cells in it. I'm turning this battery into 48 volt battery. So if I take 40 and divide it by 13, that doesn't give me an even number. But if I take 39 and divide it by 13, that gives me an even three per row. So that's why I only need 39 of them. These cells were really pretty close. I was very impressed with how these cells tested out. They test out a little bit better than these, but these are good too. They're just a little closer on these. Oh, and these cells, I don't know if I told you, they're NCR 18650PFs, 10 amp discharge cells, 29 milliamp hours. So this 3016, there we go, there's a little. So this poor cell, a good 10 amp cell, poor, poor guy isn't going to get included. Okay, so it's going to be 13 in series times 5 in parallel. So I'm going to need 65. 65 minus 39. Oh gosh, I'm going to need 26. So yeah, a lot more than I thought. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. There we go. Okay guys, this is the cell builder. It's at repack r.com uh, so what you do I'm just going to show you real quick you're going to first you're going to put all your cells in there and you're going to have a number of cells in series which is I want a 48 volt it's going to be a 13 in series and there's going to be five in parallel so and I want the cells arranged in packs so they have similar capacity and the same number of cells in parallel for sure so what I'm going to have to do, since I'm going to kind of have these together, I want to have exactly three of these in a row and two of these in a row. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to do these separate. First, I'm going to cell build these, put them all in bags. Then I'm going to cell build these, put those in separate bags, and then I'm going to have to cell build by bags. And yeah, so I'm just going to tap some of these in here. 
you really don't want to make any mistakes on this. But let me tell you, man. It is so frustrating to make a mistake. You have to go back and do it all over again. So if you're dyslexic at all, oh, nightmare on Elm Street. All right, you see what I'm doing. I'll get all them purple ones in there and then I'll get back. Okay, so now I have them all in there and as you can see, it says you only have 26 cells. You need 65 cells. That's because I'm figuring in the whole battery. We're gonna go change this to two in series, yeah. And then it'll be fine. We're gonna hit generate packs. Building your packs. It'll tell you how far they stray off each other. Like why are they also, something's not right here. Look at that, 3856, I messed up. See, that's what I'm saying. That's a perfect example, you not All right, does this look better? 43, 57, 74, 26. Divergence. Deviation. This looks pretty good, guys. We're going with this. Now, this is a way I found to do it. Not saying it's the best way, but it's just the way I found to do it. Now I gotta mark the bags. I gotta put two in each bag and mark the bag with the total amount of capacity. So the first one is 56. 30 and I'm looking for 2856 and 2774 2874 and 56 there's 2856 and 74 2774 right there so I got bag number one ready all right I won't close it I'll just lay it like that all right, now I'm gonna delete all this stuff because I've got the purple ones all bagged up and I'm gonna do it all over again. Except this time there's gonna be three in parallel. So here we go again. All right, one thing I forgot to do with the purple cells was just to check the voltage to make sure we don't have any bad ones in here. Um, they're not all going to be the same. I have the voltages written on them, but I know where they should all be close to. And if they're just close to that, 3.74, 3.73, 3.75 should all be in that range. These are new cells. I really don't have anything to worry about. But I still like to double check. Okay, now I will end up going through those purple ones and doing the same thing. I'm going to get these in their bags like I did the purple ones. Let's just see real quick. Let's generate the pack since you're right here. See what we got. So these should be a lot tighter. You guys see the divergence is minus two, minus one, minus one. Everything looks good. Okay, so now I got all the green ones bagged up, all the purple ones bagged up. I'm gonna treat each bag as a cell. So that means I have two cells in parallel, one purple, one green, and I still have 13 in a series. And I'm gonna do the same thing over again. 9214 count space 9210 comma space 9214 Okay, that should be it. Now let's see what we got. I'm looking for any super high divergences. Looks really good. I'm happy with this. So now it tells me what packs it wants together. So I think I'm just going to put them together in a bag. So I'm going to put the purples over here. So, I don't, so now I'm looking for a 9214. It's obviously a green. There's one right there. And I'm going to put it together with 5612. Right there. I'm just going to take this bag for now and just stick it inside of that one, just like that. And then go to the next one, 9210 and a 5630, right there. Okay, now I'm going to put my cells in rows. 
So I'm going to go like this, this, and this. And then these are going in between. And now I'm just going to double check them all. Positive, negative, positive, negative. So since this is a 13S, the final positive is going to be on this side. And the final negative is going to be on the bottom on that side. Okay, now I'm going to cut some strips. They're going to end up going in between like that. They're brass strips that I get from Fleet Farm. So I am going to need, be careful now, you don't want to be just like sparking stuff. Okay, so I'm going to need one, well, I'm going to use this one as my positive. And so I need one. Two, three, four, five, six over here. So there's two. I already got the right length. Because I can get a perfect three out of here, so there's no reason to leave them a little bit shorter. Okay. this there and then I'll have the wire just going between. This is a little thicker wire than I usually use but it's usually I make a bigger pack so I don't need you know thick wire for this. I'm gonna need to be like oh careful. Oh, I gotta keep that cell cool too. Just one second for you guys was probably about, I want to say three hours for me. So let's test it and see, see what we got. We should be around 48.62 volts it says. Alright, so here's negative, here's negative, here's positive. 48.8 volts. So this is the battery that's going in the Z73Z1. It's got to fit in that seat. And we got to take these screws out. Now let's get these screws out of the way. You can see where I had been grinding and stuff back there to try and make it fit. And there's one end that's kind of been narrowed down to fit back there. It's this one. That won't cause any problems. I mean, I still got to put some kind of padding on this or something. And I gotta get a BMS in here. Holy crap, that's gonna be a tight fit. Let's see if the seat even goes on. Oh yeah, guys. That's gonna work. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, subscribe to my channel!